cleaning up vocals is super important, but you don't have to wait for the mixing stage or any particular stage for you to start focusing on getting a clean vocal. If you focus on understanding just these three key steps I'm going to show you in this tutorial, you're always going to have clean, clear, quality vocals. Now, when dealing with vocals, I want you to sound clean, clear, and get best quality. There are three main steps that you need to understand, all right? The very first step, which is really the most overlooked step, is the pre-recording stage or the pre-recording step. Now, a lot of people do overlook this. They just turn on the mic, anyhow it is, and they just start recording. And now, that may work sometimes, but that's usually a trial and error way, all right? Now, I'm going to show you a surefire way that you can always prepare for your vocal recording session so that your vocals is captured in the best possible quality. So during the pre-recording stage, typically you will use a microphone to record your vocals, all right? Now, most microphones do come with switchable polar patterns. That is a little knob at the front of the mic that can switch call patterns either from the sides, from the front, or from the front and back, or, you know, just all around the mic. Now, in a home studio environment, because your room is not treated, you want it to pick up just from the front, which is the cardioid pattern. If, and if your mic does not have a switchable polar pattern, it's already cardioid by default most times, which is it only picks from one direction, okay? So you want your mic to pick from just one direction. So it focuses on just your vocal, okay? And it does not pick up the surrounding noise in your room or in your recording space. And now we need to stop siblances and plosives from getting into the mic, which is why you see lots of microphones using a pop filter, all right? Now a pop filter is fine, but in most home studios or in most recording spaces used by um, home enthusiasts and beginner producers, they're usually not treated because room treatment can be expensive. But here's an inexpensive solution that you can use, which is using a microphone shield, all right? So it's usually a ball you just put on your mic, which also has a pop filter at the front of it. And what this does is that it prevents echoes and reverb from your room from getting into your mic while recording. Now, this does not stop noise, okay? This, does, this is not a soundproof box, okay? This is just to prevent reverb and echoes from getting into your mic while recording, okay? And third, which I see a lot of people do these days, is using their hands to hold the microphone when singing now. A lot of condenser microphones are very sensitive and when you just rub the mic a little bit, you can pick up that noise. Now imagine you're having a very good vocal tick and what spoils it is your hand movement and it picks up how your hand rubs the mic. That can really impact the performance and it can be very difficult, if not impossible, to take out. So you do not want to do that. So it's best you just invest in the mic stand. Please use a mic stand on your microphone. This can really help. Because condenser microphones are so sensitive that it can pick up your hand movements and even maybe when you step with your foot, it can pick up the vibration as well. So remember to use a mic stand. And then the final thing that you need to take note of in the recording stage is recording in the time that is most quiet in your room. Now, I know a lot of people do have neighbors and not everybody has a soundproof facility to record in. So you can time the period where it's most quiet, maybe in the middle of the night or sometime during the day where it's most quiet that your neighbors make little to no noise and record so that you suppress the amount of noise processing you have to do later on during the mix, all right? So the second step that you need to understand for recording clean vocals is the actual recording stage, all right? This is where you build a vocal recording chain and your gain settings has to be set, all right? Now, let's start with the gain settings. That is how loud your mic is from your audio interface, okay? So typically, you want the audio interface gain knob to be between maybe 10.50 to at most 12 o'clock. So taking it too high can cause distortion and not have like enough headroom for processing during mixing. And taking it too low, or right, that is below 10.50, can make it too close to the noise floor where it's, the vocal sounds so quiet that it almost blends in with the background noise because a lot of mics do have self-noise, self-homes, okay? So you don't want your vocals to be too close to the noise floor, right? At the same time, you don't want it to be too loud that it sounds distorted or have little to no headroom for processing. So typically for most microphones and most audio interface, between the 10.50 and the 12 o'clock range, decent place to stay for proper mic gain when recording. Now this right here is a vocal recording chain from the templates. You can get the link in the description below my recording template, but for stock plugins, I have a third-party plugins only for FL Studio at the moment, all right? So 
when you have your vocals being recorded you want a couple of processing to go on in real time while recording your vocals so that it sounds clean it sounds clear and it sounds balanced all right and one of the things you have to take note of is tuning of course because most singers do need tuning so if it's a rapper they may not need tuning but most singers don't need your vocals to be tuned you can use auto tune or you can use the stock plugin most software is come with stock plugin tuners all right and then typically you need a compressor all right so tuning and compression are very important for most recording processes or most recording chains so what the compressor does is that it tries to make your vocal sound balanced in the loudness level because sometimes when you record your vocals is not constant in the loudness level sometimes you may scream or you may shout or you may become quiet while recording so the compressor helps to create that even balance keep the loudest parts and the most quiet parts even so that it doesn't sound inconsistent all right and it's usually the settings i use for most recording sessions and it works just fine all right it does not over compress the vocal at the same time it doesn't allow too much room for inconsistency it's just transparent but at the same time keeps it locked all right and then now you can go a step further by adding a denoiser now some digital audio workstations do not have inbuilt denoisers like fl studio like standalone plugins all right so you can invest in restoration plugins or restoration suits like i did for isotope rx using the isotope rx um, series and you can go a little bit further by adding just a little bit of reverb to give your vocals life during the recording session so just these little things can make your vocal recording session sound a whole lot better and cleaner all right So by now you should pretty much understand how important the first two steps are for getting clean vocals. Now we're going to head into the mix. But before we head into the mix, if you're recording in different software or even in the same software but you want to mix in a different session, remember to turn off all effects before exporting them for your mixing session because during the mix you have all the time to fine tune the compression, to fine tune the EQ, fine tune the reverb and any other effects you may have had during the recording session. Because during the recording session is usually fast paced you don't want to spend too much time tweaking all right so during the mixing is where you have enough time to spend to tweak to modify and make changes okay so that's why you typically turn them off you may export the recording session how it sounds with all the effects as a single file so you can listen to it for reference but when bringing in the stems and the multi-tracks do remember to turn off all the effects so that you can have more room for processing so right here we have vocal track with our beats and our plates are we here in it, oh baby, I mean it. Falling for your signs and tricks, oh baby, I mean it. Now, this vocal sounds pretty decent because while we're recording this track, there were minimal noise in the room. So, we're also going to gain stage while mixing that is adjust the loudness. So, let's link this to the mixer. All right, so just control L if you're using FL Studio to link this and just adjust the loudness level because this is also important. For your signs and tricks, oh baby, I mean it. I'm scared to be left alone again, baby, I mean it. Also, make sure the tempo is set because you may use some time based effects like delay and reverb. Take the tempo, all right, 102, so it's all set. Now, when you have your multi tracks like this, there are some parts that may have noise, usually in the vocal recording session. So, what you have to do is look for those points, it usually comes before vocal recording points and maybe just after the vocal recording points so you look for those parts and just cut them out okay so it sounds clean so if i solo it you hear that it's a little bit of noise going on there you can hear that noise there so i just take it out In it. so it starts straight from the vocal In it. Oh, baby, I the reason why this is important is because when you start adding compression a ton of processing all right it can boost those background noise and make it unpleasant in the mix okay you do not want nobody wants to hear your lip movement or your coughs or your deep breaths before a verse at least in most cases all right and this can even occur even in between verses sometimes so you may even need to come in here and listen let's solo it on here so even headphone bleeds sometimes you may need to come in here as well just cut it out and reduce it you may have some headphone bleeds that is bleeds from your headphones then. Falling for your signs and tricks, oh baby, I mean it. So you, just, so you just want to give your processing very little noise, okay? So that when you process it, it becomes very clean, all right? So you just simply do this for 
places you can re- actually hear problems going on in, okay? Get to be left alone again, baby, I mean it. Falling for your signs and tricks, so oh baby, I mean it. Yeah. All right, I think that's fine. So we're going to use a denoiser, all right? The reason why I like using Isotope RX is that most times you don't need to do much tweaking. It just automatically works when it's in adaptive mode and just play. In it. Oh, baby, I mean it. Only for your signs and tricks, oh baby, I mean it. I'm scared to be left. All right, so that helps improve the quality of your vocals. And you may also add mouths to take out mouth noise, which is isotope RX mouth click. And you see it's going to show you the amount of clicks repaired. Only for your signs and tricks, oh baby, I mean it. I'm scared to be left alone again, baby, I mean it. Falling for your signs and tricks, so baby. Add a deep breath out. Take out breath from your tracks. That is heavy or deep breathing. So you're just going to come right here, breath control. This is typically how sensitive you want it to be and how hard you want it to clamp down. So I'll just take it down here and make it maybe make it a little bit more sensitive. Hey, try to stay my lane. Me no want to cause go bay, carry she, car day or day. I'm a care a day or day. I they try to stay my lane. So the key to using a debris size is that you don't want it to be excessive that like makes it work out on natural. You just want it to clamp just a little bit of it. That is the exaggerated part of the breath and then keeps it sounding natural. Okay. Now if you notice not all of the breaths went out because it's still important to make the vocal performance sound real. Alright? So you just use a little bit of it in your vocal processing and it's going to sound natural but at the same time much cleaner all right so the next we're going to add is an eq to take care of frequency okay that is a low end mode and a high end harshness if any okay, you can see some frequency information going right here and typically for vocals most time with below the 100 hertz are usually not useful for most vocal situations right we're going to come right here come to type Come to high pass. We're going to use a high pass filter, order step eight. Now we're just going to sweep across to about 100 hertz. You can sometimes you can go up to 150, it depends on how much presence your mic has. Because some expensive mics do have much more presence than cheap microphones. Okay, so if your mic is like within maybe the 500 dollar range and above, your mic may typically pick up more presence than a cheaper microphone. So let's just say within about 100 hertz. Me no want to cause go bay, carry she, car day or day. Mama care a day or day, I they try to stay my day. And the next thing you want to do is making sure that if you have any harshness in the vocal, you can just dampen the high frequency a little bit. Me no want to cause go bay, carry she, car day or day. Mama care a day or day, I they try to. And then you can use a deesser. This takes out. Uh, the S's, the sharp S's, even if you can do that effectively. But be careful when using a DSA because if you use it excessively, it's going to make the vocal sound dull. And then we're going to come to using a compressor to just control the dynamics of the vocal, alright? So it's going to come right here. Just the typical setting for which I mostly use, all right? And then we'll listen. And then the makeup gain for the loss of the loudness. We cannot add a tuning program like auto tune. I think the key for this song is A minor. Now this depends on the song, all right? Some songs are A minor, different keys. Just try to find the key of the song. So low mill, tweak the tuning, and we'll listen. Me no want to cause go bay, carry she, car day or day. Mama care a day or day, I they try to stay my lane. Me no want to cause go bay, under your glasses, cause an eyelids. Your looks say loan is priceless. So now if I turn off the effects, this is the before. Me no want to cause go bay, carry she, car day or day. 
I'm a carer day or day. I they try to stay my day. Me no want to cause go. Then this is the after. Me no want to cause go pay. Got it, she got day or day. I'm a carer day or day. I they try to stay my day. Me no want to cause go pay. And over your glasses and eyelids. So this is how you can pretty much make your vocal sound clean and high quality so if you find this tutorial helpful don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button to keep up with more tutorials from me cheers